So uh, welcome uh, to everyone. Um, greetings. Thank you very much for joining us in this July edition um, uh, of, uh, uh, of the Ask Tom series on graphs. So we started uh, earlier this year uh, having a session about once a month. We started with an introduction to graph analytics and databases, and then we had a session focused on financial services use cases. Then we had a product recommendation session. And now uh, we thought we should do a session on how you can query graphs, specifically uh, with the property graph query language. So we'll start uh, with an introduction and then uh, do a little bit of a deep dive. And joining me um, is my colleague, uh, Ryota. We are both on the product management team for graph technologies at Oracle. And uh, if you're not, uh, you, you must be familiar with this link here, which is a direct link to the Ask Tom graph page, and uh, which has the Ask Tom also conducts sessions, is a platform for you know, sessions on spatial technologies, machine learning, uh, many different technologies related to Oracle. So you can just go to asktom.oracle.com and get access to all of this wonderful material that is there. Our standard safe harbor statement. So the agenda today is I will start with a very basic introduction to PGQL and introduce some PGQL syntax. And then Ryota will show you some examples and, and look at some, a few advanced topics. So we are joining you here today from different corners of the globe. I am based in Nashua uh, in New Hampshire on the East Coast of the United States. And Ryota is based in Bangkok. So I believe at this moment he's in Kyoto in Japan. So with that, let's get started. And, oh, and before I forget, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to post that in the Q&A panel and uh, Ryota or, or I will respond. So to do a quick recap, in case you've not had a chance to listen to some of our earlier sessions, uh, what are graphs? So graphs, uh, you can think of graphs as a data model, which gives you a different way of modeling your data. And by that, I mean, it, you can model your data based on the relationships and connections between your data items and analyze your data using graph algorithms. When you model your data as a graph, you can then apply graph algorithms to analyze your data. Almost any data set can be represented as a graph. For example, if you're looking at banking transactions, uh, user accounts can be vertices in the graph. And when you have a cash transfer between accounts, that can be an edge. Or if you look at a product recommendation system, when you have a user buying a product, that is a relationship between the user and the product. The user is a vertex, the product is a vertex, and the relationship between them is an edge that would be that this customer bought this product. So you can model almost any data set as a graph, and this has a variety of use cases in the financial services industry, law enforcement, manufacturing, public sector, and so on. And uh, like I said in the previous sessions, we have, we have walked through some use cases. We also do the analytics and data summit techcast where we focus more on use cases. So a recap of the property graph feature in Oracle database that these customers are using to develop the graph applications. You can store and manage graphs in the Oracle database. You can query the uh, graph using uh, the property graph query language. That's the focus of this session. And you can, we also have an in-memory graph server where you can load the graph from the database into memory for high performance query and analytics because graph algorithms tend to be compute intensive. So we have this specialized graph server that you can use for very high speed analytics and very high speed query. This allows us to scale to billions of uh, edges and vertices. And another key feature of our, uh, our graph, property graph feature is that uh, you, we have over 50 pre-built algorithms that you can use to, uh, that you can apply to your graph. For example, page rank, Dijkstra shortest path, clustering algorithms. All of these are pre-built 
It's a simple Java API that you can just call on your graph. We also have planning a Python, native Python client that is coming uh, in the future. And we also have a visualization tool that helps you browse your graph through a browser. And uh, we have some, uh, I'll, I'll be showing some examples of that. And all of this comes with the enterprise capabilities that you have in the database, like security, high availability, manageability, and so on. So that's the recap of the graph feature in the database. And now let's look at what's a graph, right? Why are people interested in this graph model? So when you model your data as a graph, you typically take entities, the data entities, like going back to the financial transactions example, user accounts can be entities in the graph. Like Melly has a user account, Gene has a user account, these are vertices. When Melly transfers cash to Gene, that becomes an edge in the graph. When Melly buys something from John, that's another edge in the graph. So the a feature of property graphs is that you can have, um, each vertex can have properties and each edge can also have properties. Like the vertex Melly can have properties name, address, and account number, and the edge cash transfer can have properties date and the amount transferred and so on. Uh, the nice thing about graphs is the, the schema can be very flexible. Uh, so if Melly has these three properties, uh, the vertex John does not have to have the same three properties. He might only have name and address. Or uh, you don't have to, uh, or you don't have to have the same set of properties, and you don't even have to have the same set of vertices. Like Melly, Jean, and John are of type people, uh, but you can also have vertices, let's say, of type company. So you can have different kinds of vertices all in the same graph, different kinds of edges all in the same graph, and you can specify which vertices and which edges you're querying when you query your graph. So once we, have, once we have modeled our data as a graph, like what are we really looking for when we query a graph? Like what is, why do, what is the advantage you get when you query your data as a graph? One of, the, one of the things is that you can identify patterns in your data. You can identify specific interesting patterns about what's happening with respect to the connections between data items. So uh, for example, here we have a pattern which says that you, you can go from, there's an edge from a node with ID 259, goes to vertex with ID 869, then goes to 387 and back. This is a specific pattern. So the, when, uh, when, when folks are querying graphs, they want, they're looking to find out whether this particular pattern or any particular pattern exists in this graph. And on the left here is another pattern where we are saying, uh, is there a pattern that connects 528 to 326 and then to 569? So that's another pattern. So querying a graph is typically querying for, for patterns that you're looking for in your data. So looking at some more examples of patterns. Cycles. Cycles is a very um, interesting uh, pattern that's used for detecting fraud uh, in a variety of cases when it comes to financial institutions or uh, want to detect uh, tax evasion and so on. So you can see here is a two hop cycle. You can see that you have an edge from this node to this node and back to this node. So if this is a cash transfer example, then you can see that some A transferred money to B who transferred the money back to A. Here on the right, you have again cycles, but this time with three hops. So you're saying that A transferred money to B who transferred money to C who transferred money back to A. So you, these are like cycles patterns. Another, another example of patterns are paths. So you can uh, determine, what you would want to determine in your graph, is there a path between these two nodes? Um, I have this, this forest of nodes and edges and I want to see whether there is a path between these two nodes. And that has applications in a variety of use cases and I wanted to uh, include here an, an, uh, a use case that you might not immediately think of, which is modeling bill of materials if you are building a car or if you're a manufacturing company manufacturing a car or, or a phone and so on. Because they are in their bill of materials, they want to do basic reachability analysis. So which, uh, which components are connected to each other so that they want to see what is the impact of changing one component. 
which are the other components that could be impacted. So finding paths has many different use cases. And you can also be looking at more, uh, in, uh, more complex patterns. And this is an example from a customer, uh, once again, financial services institution. And they are looking at the cash transfers um, by modeling them as edges, as I was explaining. So here you have a source vertex and you have a destination vertex and uh, cash being transferred between them and going through a lot of intermediate vertices. Now, this might be an acceptable pattern. This might be what the financial institution expects, or it might be an anomaly. They might think that when cash is transferred, they just want to transfer cash between two accounts and they don't like going through intermediate accounts. So then it's an anomaly. So when they see a pattern uh, that is anomalous, then they, that's then they can act on it or do something else uh, and, and decide they have to take some uh, action uh, on, the, on that information. So querying graphs is all about querying, uh, finding patterns in the data. So when we talk about graphs uh, to developers and uh, we say that, okay, yes, you to query graphs, uh, you need to find patterns, you need to have a way of specifying patterns. Uh, often people uh, tell me that, oh, yes, but I'm really too busy, I don't have time to learn another language, which I completely understand because I don't have time to learn another language either. So we have really tried to design PGQL in a way that is very easy to learn. We have used very simple concepts and we've made it as SQL-like as possible. So in particular, if you are a SQL developer, then it becomes very easy to use. And even if not, uh, I, think, I think the language is simple enough that it is easy to use. The, the key thing to, is to just figure, is to learn how to create the match patterns and we'll see some examples. With respect to everything else, we have used as much of SQL-like uh, um, constructs as possible. Like you have select from, where, order by, just like you can select star from, a table, you can select edges from a graph. You can include, we have included aggregation functions that people would be familiar with, like sum and average and min and max and so on. So you can uh, compute the sum of properties in your um, in edges in your graph. And DDL, of course, you want to, to be easy to create a graph. So we have the create property graph syntax, that makes it very easy for you to create a property graph from data stored in relational tables. And also, of course, DML, you can insert, update, delete graph vertices, graph edges, and graph properties, just like you would insert, update, and delete rows in a table. So we used as much as possible as the SQL-like or database-like constructs, and then just added the graph pattern matching part to it. So before getting into the graph pattern matching part, let me just uh, uh, talk about how you can execute PGQL, but where can you execute it? So you have your graph stored in the database or maybe you've loaded it into the in-memory graph server. You can execute PGQL by using our GraphVis tool, where uh, and I will be using, showing a few examples of that. You can also execute PGQL using the SQL CL client. Uh, if you're familiar, if you run SQL queries, you might very well have used the SQL CL client. You can put it in PGQL mode and then you can run PGQL queries. Or you can use Java, you can use Notebook, uh, where we have a, the graph server interpreter, so you can submit your PGQL queries there. You can use the JSHL CLI uh, to run snippets of Java code for quick testing and prototyping. And of course, you can build a Java application, which is what many people will do in production create a Java application, embed your PGQL query, and execute it, and the result would be um, a table in the application. So just a few screenshots to, to kind of uh, show what I was talking about. Here's the GraphVis tool. You have a query that you're submitting here, and then uh, you have uh, the results will be visual uh, in, and displayed in your browser. Uh, here are some screenshots about the SQL uh, CL client I was talking about start up the SQL CL client, make a connection to the database user, and then uh, set it to uh, the PGQL mode here, and then that's it, you'll be, you'll be ready to run PGQL queries. So now I'm querying this graph called the financial transactions graph, I'm counting the number of vertices, and so on. So you can just run PGQL queries interactively on, uh, in the SQL CL client. 
and using the PGX, which is our graph server interpreter, you can run uh, snippets of Java code which are embedding PGQL queries. So many different ways in which you can run PGQL queries. So uh, the property graph query language is something we have, uh, we have developed. Uh, the parsing is open sourced. The specification is open to the public. So if you're interested in writing PGQL queries, you might want to bookmark this page. The, this has a lot of resources on, on using PGQL. Our goal in this session is to help you get started using these resources and not feel that this is a language that will consume a lot of time to learn. Our goal is to really highlight that this is a simple language to learn. And then when you start writing queries, you can refer to this resource to, to write queries um, using uh, PGQL. So uh, there is really no standard yet for graph query languages. We are actively participating in the SQL standard to extend SQL to do graph, uh, to include graph patterns. And till such time, uh, PGQL is, is an option to work with uh, graphs. So let's go uh, move on to some basic PGQL syntax. So, um, the, the, so we saw the SQL constructs, we saw the aggregation functions, and now how would you specify the match pattern? So when you're matching a pattern, you want to be able to have a way to specify vertices, edges, whether an edge is directed or undirected, and specify the type of uh, vertex or edge and so on. So, Vertices are represented uh, using parentheses, and or you can just have an empty parenthesis to match any vertex, or you can have a variable like b is a variable and name is a variable. If you want to use that variable to access other properties in your query, for example, here I have this query here where I'm saying select a, b, and e1. So a represents a vertex, b represents a vertex, e1 represents an edge. And I'm looking for all patterns that match two vertices with a, with a directed edge. So the edges can be any type, uh, vertices can be any type. I've not put any conditions on the properties. I'm just saying match any two vertices which are, which are connected by a directed edge. And you can see here square brackets are used to represent the edge, just like you use parentheses to represent the uh, represent vertices, and then you have here, here an example of a directed edge. And here's uh, another example, uh, very similar to the earlier one, but has a longer uh, uh, match pattern, where I'm saying uh, is A connected to B using a directed edge, which is connected to C, which is connected to, back to A. So I'm looking for cycles here. I'm saying here is uh, A, B, and C, and coming back to A. So uh, I'm just specifying the pattern I'm looking for in the graph. So once again, I want to highlight that the select statement is just is like any other select statement from you this selecting from the graph, and the match pattern is what is um, is, is what is new for querying graphs. So uh, here's another example where I am uh, looking. I'm going to do something similar. I'm trying to see whether there is a pattern that matches uh, these two vertices and an edge between them, but I'm restricting the search to vertices of type person and edges of type transfer. So as I was saying, a graph can have many different kinds of vertices and many different kinds of vertices, uh, edges. So I'm just restricting my search for a pattern to uh, vertex, vertices of type person and edges of type transfer. And the last example here on this slide is um, I'm looking, again, I'm selecting from this graph and my match pattern is a little more interesting. I am looking for uh, vertices of type person and I'm now saying I'm using this slash notation which is used in PGQL to say zero or more hops because I have the star here. So I now want to uh, see whether there's a connection between vertex A and vertex B but I'm looking at zero or more hops. I'm not just uh, looking for one hop, I'm just saying zero or more hops. And I've also added a where clause, where I say where a dot name equals Nikita. So now a is, is now the variable to represent this vertex. Name is a property of that of uh, vertex of type person. So I can now qualify my query with this where clause. 
So uh, some more uh, examples, uh, uh, starting with the simplest one, select V from graph and match V. This is just going to select all the vertices from a graph. It's like the select star from tab in a table. Or select, next one is select all edges from a graph, select all directed edges from a graph. And this is the, we saw a similar query to this just now where we said select all vertices which match the name Nikita. Now we can also start doing things like order by. Select all vertices from a graph and order by the property v.name. Um, and now we are adding other interesting clauses. We're saying find me all edges in the graph where the property value is greater than 1000. And here I'm, I'm selecting, I'm doing more projection. I'm saying select, instead of just giving you the vertices and edges, I'm saying select v dot name uh, from the graph where uh, the amount is greater than uh, 1000. And here I'm going back to using the type of edge as a way to filter out some of the edges. I'm saying I want to run this query only on edges that are of type transfer. And again, I'm bringing some of these elements together in this example. I'm saying we, uh, I'm looking at vertices of type person, uh, edges of type transferred, and then amount greater than 1,000. Uh, some aggregation examples, count, sum, max, just like you could run in SQL. You can say select count from graph. So it'll just count the number of vertices you have in a graph. Select sum of this E amount. So amount is a property on edges. So we can just sum over E dot amount or the property from this graph. So basically you're selecting all the edges and summing over the property value. And similarly, you can do a max on the property value. So the match clause is really where you have to focus your attention to learn about querying graphs. And once you just figure out the basics of what what is these edges, and properties. I think it's, it's very trivial to start writing graph queries. So before uh, going to show you some examples, let me just show you a, a, a create property graph example, uh, because you need to have a graph obviously when you, before you start querying it. So assuming you have your table, your data already in relation tables like accounts, customers, and so on, how would you create a graph? So we have this nice syntax in PGQL that helps you create a graph and you can specify the vertex table. So intuitively data entities in your data would become uh, vertex tables. So customers would all uh, become vertices in your graph. Every customer, each customer, so every row in the customer table would become a vertex. And then every row in an accounts table will become a vertex. So you have, um, here you're just specifying that these are the vertex tables. So you're saying that every row in these tables will become a vertex. And then you have the edge tables that you're now saying, okay, I'm going to connect, uh, get edges from this table and I'm going to reference to uh, the table accounts and the table customers. So we are saying that you can have um, a, a relationship between accounts and customer table with the own by relationship, or you can have a relationship with called transfer uh, between, um, uh, between uh, our users, between uh, different rows in the accounts table. So between different vertices that are represented as accounts, you can have this transfer relationship and you get that data from the transfer table. So it's very easy to just look at a set of tables and then start uh, creating graphs from there. So let me just switch and show you a few examples. Um, so here I have, uh, I'm selecting the financial transactions graph. So because I'm selecting the graph, I don't, I'm not specifying the from clause here. So when you're working with the graph with tool, you select your graph from this pull down menu. And then I'm just saying select all the vertices in this graph, which like I said, is like the select star from tab equivalent to that query. And then after we do that, I'm going to select all the edges. So these are the vertices we have in the graph. You have a person, uh, vertices of type person, of type account, and of type company. So that, next I'm going to select all the edges in the graph. And again, it's similar to select star from tab. And let me then, after we do that, let me now look at this one. So you can see here now I've selected the vertices and edges in the graph. So now I'm going to go back to selecting vertices in a graph. 
but I'm only going to select vertices of type account. Because we see there are many different kinds of vertices, I'm going to select vertices of type account. And by the way, I'm running all of this on my uh, uh, autonomous database free tier instance. So, okay, so that was a query. Now let's now get edges for these vertices, edges connected to these vertices. So, and then again, you'll see the edges. So then let's do a little a more interesting, uh, basically a, a longer pattern. So now you see the accounts and they're connected by these edges. So if you look at this query now, which is a longer pattern, now I'm selecting, I'm saying that I want to find all accounts which have had a transaction from here. So you can see here, I'm using a directed edge in this direction. So all accounts which have had a deposit or a cash transfer from any vertex, and I want to find the name of that person. So name of the person who owns an account which has had a deposit from any vertex. So when I run this, I should be able to find all the folks that have deposited, um, all the transactions that have deposited into uh, Nikita's account. So this is uh, Nikita and this is the person, and this is the account that, uh, this is the other account that has been uh, deposited uh, into this account. And you can click on this to get more information about the particular uh, vertex here. Yeah. If you want to know the ID or more properties of, of the person. This is a very simple graph, so I don't have a whole lot of detail. Uh, but let me now uh, go quickly to the SQL CL that I was talking about. Like if you want to do an order buy or something, right? order buy is not something we can visualize. Like I have an order buy here. You cannot visualize this easily. So if you're going to do this kind of an order buy query, you would go to some, maybe a command line tool and then you can see that uh, you, you're retrieving all the names here uh, using the order buy class. Or if I did not have uh, this order buy class, it's just going to return all the names. Uh, then one last thing to show, just to shift it. If you were to do something like a count that is not particularly visual, you can still return the tables here. Uh, you can still return a table. So here we're going to have one, we have only one node with v.name equals uh, Nikita. So you can now you can see the count is returned as a table. For some queries, uh, you can get a table using PGVis, but if you're doing it programmatically or if you want to do it from a command line, then you would switch to a different uh, tool to run these queries. Uh, now let's take a look at a few more uh, complex queries. So we were using a simple graph. Now let me select the other graph uh, cycles here. And I am uh, going to, I think this is more nodes and I'm trying to detect cycles like A goes to B, B goes to C, C goes to A. I'm limiting it to 10 results because uh, this is a larger graph. And you can see here that the cycles are returned. I can change what I am viewing into the label. I might want to look at the ID and that is possible as well. And if I want to run other queries, here's another interesting query. I want to run, uh, I want to see how many uh, nodes, or uh, all the paths that are one to six hops away between uh, vertices and represented by variable N and M. I could run that. And you could see here that uh, you will get uh, the, the node 1 is here because you're starting with uh, ID of 1 and then you're, all these nodes are connected from 1 uh, with either 1 or 6 hops. So with that, let me hand this over to Ryota. Okay, uh, we are getting some uh, questions. So um, uh, maybe Mary can answer. Yeah, I look so, at them. Yes, yes uh, please uh, give more questions on Q&A um, window. Yeah. Okay, uh, in the uh, latter part of this session, I will explain how to quickly set up your 
uh, own environment to try running PGQL queries using GraphViz, using Chaparin, and how to learn PGQL more in depth. For setting up your uh, graph server, uh, uh, we can use a uh, Docker installation as well as uh, uh, Oracle Cloud always free uh, instances. As Melly mentioned, Oracle Property Graph supports Chaparin Notebook as an interactive interface so that I put um, some uh, tutorials for learning PGQL. So I'd like to share uh, these things. Uh, to get uh, those tutorials as well as the environment, you can simply clone my GitHub repository from here and download and extract packages uh, and uh, using Docker Compose command, uh, build and start the Docker containers. Uh, let's go to see my uh, repository, GitHub repository. Uh, the uh, installation process is explained here and uh, you can you can get uh, this uh, particular uh, tag uh, and and also you need uh, oracle graph 7 client package as well as groovy and the latest one is 20.3 just released this week uh, but uh, my repository is still using 20.2 i'm going to upload uh, and update uh, the tutorial soon Okay, um, I think I should uh, put this uh, link uh, to this chat window. Oh, it doesn't work. Uh, maybe you can download uh, this slide later to try uh, set up, setting up this uh, environment. After setting up uh, these containers, uh, those containers include Graph Server, Graph Viz, and Separing with uh, all tutorials. Oracle Database is optional here, as the small sample datasets can be loaded from files into Graph Server directory. But of course, if you need a uh, large data, data set uh, for Graph Analytics, you need Oracle Database as a backend. The first tutorial is for learning basic graph pattern matching using student network uh, data set, which is very small graph here. Let's uh, go to see the tutorial here. Yes, this is a tutorial you can see on Chaparin. And of course, our graph visualization uh, app is also working on the container. And in this uh, separate notebook, you can load the small data set from files, and then you can run uh, those simple uh, PGQL queries. All these uh, tutorials follow the PGQL online documentation uh, Meli mentioned. So you can go to uh, this uh, PGQL run.org and you can see all the uh, specification and uh, precise definition of uh, uh, the syntax. The second tutorial shows how to test reachability in graph pattern matching. And the third one is also about path queries but uh, this one is focusing on shortest path, cheapest path, these things. The final tutorial is for uh, graph modification, how to modify graph using insert, update, and delete statements. For learning PGQL queries on separate notebook or any Java application, we use two um, methods. One is query PGQL method for running select statement and get result set and show result set. And another one is called clone and execute PGQL for running graph modification uh, queries like insert and update. So 
let's go back to the tutorial on tapering and switch to the tutorial four for learning graph modification. In this tutorial, you can insert uh, vertices, edges using Chrome and execute PGQL method. And then you can access to the inserted uh, vert vertex using query PGQL method. Another uh, method I want to highlight here is explain PGQL method for seeing execution plans of uh, um, a PGQL query. In this case, this select statement is matching uh, two hops path beginning uh, starting from P1 to P2 to P3. In this case, the execution plan is like this. Uh, the P1 is the root vertex, vertex and using a neighbor match operation, you can uh, get all two P2 nodes and then another neighbor match is detecting all P3 nodes. You can run this explain PGQL on Chaperin notebook. So let's go back to PGQL one and then uh, maybe you can just uh, Oh, let's just change query to explain. So you can get the, uh, the prompt here. Okay, some advanced uh, topics. Before that, uh, Going back to uh, the uh, PGQL specification online document, this is the index and uh, we can uh, overview PGQL elements. The first one is creating a property graph, which is about create property graph statement, uh, Melly uh, already explained. And for uh, graph pattern matching, this is about uh, match crows we have already discussed. These two are about group by having some count, order by limit, offset. Maybe you are all familiar uh, with these uh, uh, things because these exist in SQL as well. Variable length path. This is very unique to uh, PGQL, uh, reachability, shortest path, cheapest path. So I'm gonna uh, talk a bit more about this today. Function and expression. Uh, these, are, these exist in SQL, but uh, some uh, functions such as vertex function, edge function uh, might be unique. Subquery capability is still limited in PGQL. But it uh, has exist, not exist, SCARA, subquery, uh, these things. Graph modification for, uh, is uh, about insert, update, delete statements I mentioned. And this is very interesting because you can uh, insert node, edge, and also when you uh, delete nodes, maybe you have to think of uh, dangling edges, they, met, they, they should be all removed as well. But uh, when you delete edges, uh, you can keep uh, orphan nodes. So this is uh, somehow uh, very uh, interesting. Okay, um, but today uh, let's uh, go back to uh, path queries. Uh, the first one is the reachability query to test the existing of paths between vertices. You can, we can use slashes 
instead of square bracket. So this path, uh, this asterisk uh, indicates that uh, um, this path uh, should have zero or uh, zero or more uh, edges, and this bracket bracket with two and three indicates that uh, this path has uh, two hops or three hops. So you can go to the uh, learning PGQL2. Then when you learn uh, asterisk one, you will get all these uh, persons because you can uh, follow all these persons here. And then you can you can change asterisk to plus to remove the start node. And also, uh, let's say if uh, you need two or more uh, edges, you can get only Albel and Judith. This one or this one. So going back to this query. Um, if you put two and three here, uh, you cannot match uh, one hop uh, uh, one hop path, John, but you can get Albert and Judith. You can also use path pattern macro. Path pattern can be declared using path as syntax like this has parent is the uh, the de, de, uh, is uh, a declared path which can start from anything but the edges uh, must has labels has further or has mother and the destination node has to have a path on rubble so this query is starting from Mario and Luigi and sharing the common ancestor. This query finds the shortest path between two vertices, A and B. But this is actually one of the shortest paths because uh, this graph might have uh, several three hops uh, paths between A and B. In that case, we can just uh, randomly uh, get uh, one of the shortest paths. The amount here are aggregated without group by crows, which means that uh, this path has three edges and each edge has uh, amount and you can sum up the amount uh, with this sum um, and an array aggregation, but you don't have group by uh, crows in this query. We call this uh, mechanism as horizontal aggregation. This is a, a variant of shortest path query. You can get the k uh, the top k uh, shortest path. So in this case, top three shortest paths can be retrieved. Uh, you can find that uh, this graph has three hop paths between A and B, and the uh, uh, third shortest path has seven hops. The final query uh, finds the cheapest path based on the cost. In this case, the cost is an edge property amount. So uh, you can specify cost and is uh, edge amount. In this case, the cost is selected uh, uh, edge property amount. And this query find the path with the smallest total cost. So um, 
this path has three edges and three edges each edge has uh, amount so uh, you can get the total amount from the past and this path has a, a smallest uh, total cost you can specify other edge properties as far as those properties uh, numbers oh by the way uh, when you uh, use graph bees graph bees can show the path as dot line only to get the nodes and edges intermediate nodes and edges on the path you need to get the result in table format using um, horizontal aggregation I mentioned okay this is all I want to introduce today I hope you to try more complex queries check results and check the query execution plans on your environment Um, I see there's a question, but before that, let me just mm -hmm. quickly talk about this slide, which is, um, I wanted to, um, again, uh, talk about standards. When you talk about query languages, the question always is, is this a vendor-specific language? Um, if so, should we take the trouble of learning it? So we are uh, committed to standards. We are working closely with the SQL standards committees to as they extend SQL to include graph pattern matching. And where possible, we're including similar syntax. For example, the standard is discussing create property graph syntax. We have implemented a very similar syntax in the property graph query language. So as the standard evolves and is uh, adopted, uh, we plan to support the standard. But till such time that the standard is available, we have the property graph query language option. And um, we are, as I said, we are trying to keep the syntax as aligned as possible uh, with, the, with the expected uh, syntax from the standard so that uh, if applications have to be moved sometime in the future, uh, that should be possible. But we are committed to supporting PGQL and any uh, standard that will emerge from the SQL Standards Committee. And I think with that, uh, we are going to be. Um, wrapping up and here are some helpful links uh, about graphs property graphs we have a blog that we encourage you to visit the ask Tom series of course and we have a youtube channel where we post uh, videos um, and of course some of us have twitter handles that you might be interested in following uh, we plan to have the next uh, session uh, i think in august and that will be focused on analytics. That's, this one is focused on queries. That will be focused on analytics. Uh, so we will feel, uh, please join us for that. And we have just released Oracle Graph Server and Client and 20.3. It's available from oracle.com. And to run any of these examples or to just get started with graphs, um, I think Giant posted a link to the free tier uh, uh, labs that are available. And of course, you also have the Docker images that um, Ryota was pointing to. So the slide deck and all of that will be available so you can access the links and get started with working with graphs or, or reach out to us via Twitter or any other means at any time. So with that, I think someone had raised a hand. Can you post your question on, on the Q&A &A panel? Uh, I, I missed the name, I think, Hasim. Um, are there any other questions you want to post on the Q&A channel? Oh, the question is, is, there's one question, is Docker a requirement? No, Docker is not a requirement. We just have Docker images available for people to get started with easily. It is not a requirement. It's just an easy way to get started, which is why uh, Ryota was using that. And I want to stress again that you can use the cloud free tier option or the, or the labs you can provision some uh, an instance using the labs infrastructure for free at no cost to you to also run some of these examples. Any other questions? So if there are no other questions, we can wrap this up. 
a, uh, the recording will be available uh, along with uh, the slides on the OSTOM website. Uh, so thank you very much, and we hope to see you again at a future session.